This is your Barbados Today Morning News update for Tuesday, April 30th, 2019. Thanks for joining us. I'm Carol Williams. We begin with news that a 27-year-old man is Barbados' 22nd murder victim for the year. Police say Anthony Nurse of Stratford Hills, the Pine St. Michael, was stabbed to death while in the community around 5.45 p.m. yesterday. Nurse was transported to hospital where he succumbed to his injuries. A man is assisting police with investigations. This is the seventh reported stabbing for the year. Last evening's killing comes less than a week after a 39-year-old woman was fatally stabbed. A 42-year-old man has been charged with her murder. Prime Minister Mia Motley continues her staunch defense of her administration's handling of the economy. She told thousands of supporters and others gathered for the BLP's annual National Heroes Day picnic at Barclays Park, Obiborn Highway, St. Andrew yesterday, that her government never promised any quick fixes to the problems facing the country. But I heard a lot of people talking, trying to make you believe that we are belonging to some abracadabra movement. We never came to fool you. We have told you from day one that you have given us a mandate to provide permanent solutions to you and your family, not quick fixes, not a quick fix to make you feel good for one minute and by tomorrow you're catching your tail again. That belongs to those who won in 2013, who made people feel good. And within three months, you know that you had made the worst decision in your life. The difference with us is judge a man or a woman by who they start out and what they start out to do. Meantime, Motley indicated that her government hasn't abandoned plans announced last year to erect a statue in honor of Dim Ernie Bourne. We are going to work with the Ermi Bourne Foundation to make sure that we have erected on this site at Barclays Park a statue of Dame Ermi Bourne so that, so that every Barbadian little girl running about here and on any other future day that you run about and you go and see that statue and you ask somebody, Mommy, who is she? Granny, who is she? Daddy, who is she? They will tell you that she was the first woman ever to represent people in the Parliament of Barbados in this country. And that she did it with Sir Grant Lee Adams, who became, who was her leader at the time. There will come a time in the future when I may have to name Barclays Park after the longest serving member. But he is still serving. Turning now to the Democratic Labour Party, which is continuing to rebuild following its election defeat at the party's 64th anniversary service at its George Street Auditorium in Belleville on Sunday, President Verla de Pisa urged members to speak out more. I am satisfied that the people of Barbados are calling out for assistance and leadership. <laughs> that the Democratic Labour Party is that saving voice. Yeah. What I hope to do is to inspire you so that you get up and you do on behalf of your country through the Democratic Labour Party. I inspire you, I hope, to speak up and speak out, there may well be repercussions, but I have urged you privately and now I urge you publicly to have the courage of your convictions. While some were celebrating, a Lucas Street St. Philip family was in distress. A fire that occurred just after noon yesterday destroyed their house, leaving 12 of them homeless. Government is examining the issue of overtime pay across the service. That's according to Labour Minister Colin Jordan, who cited this as one of the issues that must be dealt with as the administration applies revenue control measures. His comments at the Barbados Workers Union Thanksgiving service on Sunday comes as the country gears up for major celebrations tomorrow. 
structural inefficiencies like built-in overtime and fixed weekly schedules have to be maturely examined in a real and level-headed manner. This, ladies and gentlemen, <coughs> is not an easy conundrum to deal with and will call for continued dialogue among the social partners. It will also require that the Social Justice Committee answer the question, what does social justice look like for Barbados? In other news, efforts continue this week to come up with a financing plan to help regional carrier Liat. The company's board of directors and shareholders are holding back-to-back -back meetings in Antigua to review proposed measures. CEO Julie Reefer jones says discussions are ongoing with regional governments about a minimum revenue guarantee model with contributions from the territories served by the airline. However, she says while the talks have been slower than anticipated, the company remains optimistic. In the meantime, the CEO says Liat is continuing to look forward to a good summer. Liat continues to fly and we are, we are operating to the 15 destinations across the Liat network. We are committed to connecting the region and our Easter performance um, in terms of our on-time performance was over 80%. We look forward to our operations over this upcoming summer period. Uh, as you know, this is the year of festivals and there are many festivals and events which we will continue to serve during this uh, summer period. We encourage our passengers to continue to book and to travel across the region to enjoy these events within the Caribbean. There are ongoing discussions with governments about the LIAT network and about the need for the territories served by LIAT to contribute through a minimum revenue guarantee model. The pace of these discussions has been slower than we anticipated, but the company remains optimistic that the discussions will be concluded shortly. There's regional and international news after this short break. Barbados Today, news you can trust. After weeks of speculation, there is no confirmation that an embattled government minister in St. Lucia is out. More from HDS News Force. The word of the end of Dr. Ubaldus Raymond's role as a minister in the Alan Chastney led administration follows weeks of soap opera-like clips of Dr. Raymond in conversation with an unfledged female friend, a Trinidadian national. The tips were telling. Only days after meeting the lady, Dr. Raymond was spilling his guts and more, discussing his personal and professional life, as well as his sexual prowess in unvarnished detail. The other, other public servants asked for money, and, it, and, and, the, and the sad thing about it is, you, they ask for increases. Um, it's like they believe that they're entitled to it. The initial report some two weeks ago of his resignation proved to be a false dawn, with Prime Minister Alan Chastney denying any knowledge of Dr. Raymond's resignation. He was sent on leave and investigations were launched into the affair. Though little was said of the exact nature of the investigations or the investigators. And finally, the UN is granting Mozambique $13 million in emergency funds to help cope with the massive flooding and destruction caused by Cyclone Kenneth, the second tropical storm to hit the country within weeks. Weather experts are warning that Kenneth, which has killed 38 people so far, could dump twice as much rain on northern Mozambique as the previous system. Leave Pemba and the devastated villages around, try and find a higher ground, 
That's the goal for tens of thousands of residents, because more rain is coming. People here have another urgent problem, finding food. Cyclone Kenneth destroyed grocery stores, but this one is still standing. Today morning, start the raining, coming too much, and we here we stay we busy to make it this business because the people need to eat, need the bread, but I try to sell some something to other people here. Mozambique has faced flooding before. But this year is the first time in recent history it has been hit by two cyclones in one season. This is what the northern coast looks like now. 35,000 homes damaged or destroyed. Images that resemble the tragedy in southern Mozambique six weeks ago after Cyclone Idai. And the UN World Program says that the new storm could dump twice as much rain as last time. And that's news, but for the very latest, visit our website at www.barbadastoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook. And sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media in bus terminals, as well as screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. You can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM. I'm Carol Williams. Have a good day.